Howdy readers, I'm Jason, this is chapter and verse, and this video is a few days late, but um, better late than never. So this is my winter wrap up and my spring uh, TBR video. And the reason why it's a little bit late is because uh, I was waiting for Robert to announce um, what round two, uh, or the quarterfinals um, of the uh, book two prize judging I was gonna be, because I'm gonna be judging that round and I didn't know what books I was going to be reading until now. So, um, Let's just get right into this. So of the books I read in the winter, uh, the first of them, uh, obviously, was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And this was maybe the fourth or fifth time I've read this, uh, and it was marvelous. And I actually read it out loud um, in a series of live streams uh, here on BookTube. And those uh, videos, the archives of those videos, um, are still able to be seen. So. If in uh, late March or early April you feel a hankering to listen to me read A Christmas Carol, you can do that. So I will leave the link uh, to those in the description box below in case you're curious. And then I read uh, The Buried Giant uh, by Kazuo Ishiguro. Uh, and this was a buddy read with Robert from Barter Hordes, the aforementioned Robert. And this was marvelous. Um, this was just a really terrific book. I thought more and more of it um, after I finished it, the more I thought about it. And, um, and it, it seems to be a novel that is kind of living really largely uh, in, my, in my mind. I will put the link to the review video I did of this um, below as well. So. And then I read uh, from my book club, um, Lincoln and the Bardo. Uh, by George Saunders, which was uh, just fucking awesome, actually. Uh, not to put too fine a point on it, um, or at all a fine a point on it. This was maybe the best book I have read uh, this year so far. And then I read, um, as part of the uh, Betsy Tacey read-along that my wife is co-hosting, um, Betsy Tacey and... Betsy Tacey and Tib by Maud Hart Lovelace. And I really want to read the third book. I have fallen behind. I apologize for that. But um, basically, if you have kids or if you have grandkids, I have neither. But if you do, um, you should be buying these books uh, for your kids, not just for little girls, not just for your daughters or granddaughters. But if you have boys, too, um, these are some of the best books I have ever read about childhood. So um, if you haven't read them yet yourself, you must. And if you have little ones in your life, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, and then I read for my mortality project um, that I'm running here, which is called You Carry a Coffin Today. Um, I read this Republic of Suffering, uh, Death and the American Civil War by Drew Gilpin Faust. This was marvelous as well. Uh, and I will try to remember to link both of the videos I did on this book um, in the description box below. And then another buddy read. Um, I buddy read uh, Overton by Adam Thorpe with Mark Nash. And, uh, and this is a, a challenging novel. It's an uneven novel where it's wonderful. It's just tremendously wonderful. Um, where it's difficult or problematic. It's almost unreadable. But yeah, if you're looking for uh, historical fiction that is attempting things that are um, quite novel and, uh, and quite experimental in many ways, um, Alverton is a book that you should be uh, on the lookout for. And then, I don't have a copy of it here with me, uh, but uh, also for the Mortality Project, I read the play Wit by Margaret uh, Edson, I think is her name. And that was... Um, Glorious. Uh, that was maybe as good as Lincoln in the Bardo. Uh, maybe better, actually. And then for my book club, uh, I read Fools of Fortune by William Trevor. And this was my second uh, William Trevor novel. Uh, it is not as good as the other uh, novel of his I've read, The Story of Lucy Galt. But the thing that impressed me most uh, about Fools of Fortune, and which I feel like is kind of Trevor's trademark, really, uh, is the stillness. Um, there, there's just really great quietness in, uh, in his fiction. He really understands how to write um, calm, I think, uh, which is a very difficult thing to do. Um, in fact, I can only think of a few writers who do it as well as he does. Marilyn Robinson is probably the only one, um, and she might actually do it better than Trevor did. But uh, yeah, this was, this was an impressive book, a flawed book, 
but an impressive book. And then I read um, The Pigeon Tunnel, Stories from My Life, which is the memoir uh, from John Le Carre. Um, you'll hear me more often calling him John Le Carr, just because I'm lazy, I suppose. But um, yeah, if you are at all a fan of his fiction, of his spy novels, and if you're not, you should be, because um, his spy novels are the shit. They're amazing. Um, this memoir was everything I hoped it would be. Um, it's really just these little snippets from his life, little vignettes. Um, but my God, do you get a sense of the life he has lived. And this man has led a life like no one else. Uh, it is a great, great, great book. Kelly's a big fan of this uh, as well. And uh, we have both talked at length about how um, we rarely reread memoirs. And both of us expect to give this one another read in the future. So, and I am currently reading, right, The Hinge Between Seasons. Uh, as you guys know, I am currently still reading My Mammoth, um, 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. And um, I don't expect to get it finished this month. Um, part of March of the Mammoths, uh, again, right, it's, it's a readathon that's really designed for slow readers. There should be no shame in not finishing your mammoth before the end of the month. Um, a number of, of booktubers I love and have been following uh, are also going to be finishing theirs in early April. I told Jay Shea in a comment uh, last night on his latest Kristen Laverne's Daughter video um, was, uh, was a quote from a Rush song. Um, the point of a journey uh, is not to arrive. It's the journey itself. It's the challenge itself. It's the immersion uh, itself. And... Um, I expect to be about three quarters of the way uh, through 2666 by the end of this coming weekend. Next up, I'm going to be reading from my book club, um, and hopefully I'll be able to read it pretty quickly, uh, even though it's quite long. Uh, Kelly, I think, read it in a week, um, but I'm going to be reading The uh, Volcano Lover uh, by Susan Sontag. And I hope it's a better book than her other novel I've read, which was In America, also for my book club, many, many years ago. And I did not like that book uh, very much at all. And it was my choice in the book club. Um, this one was chosen by one of our newest members, uh, Laura. Hello, Laura. Uh, Laura, who I'm really hoping starts her booktube channel soon. And um, yeah, so, so here's the hoping that this book um, is more impressive than In America was. And then uh, the next couple of books I'm going to be reading for the Mortality Project um, are Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. Uh, we're also going to be watching the film based on this in the month of April. This is a, a teen novel, if, uh, if, if I understand correctly. I love the film. I have never read the book, and I'm really looking forward to reading the book. And, uh, and we're also going to be reading um, the selected poems of Frank Stanford, and this is called The Light the Dead Sea. And, um, and I've only read a few poems from Frank Stanford over the years, but I've owned this book for a very, very long time. And, uh, and I think I was first made aware of this poet, uh, I think in an interview that I read uh, with the Indigo Girls, uh, who I was actually lucky enough to interview myself uh, when I was in college. I interviewed uh, Amy Ray um, just ahead of the show that they did at the University of Wyoming. So i um, really excited to finally read uh, the poetry of Frank Stanford. And then for the booktube prize, uh, and I will not be making my uh, feelings about these novels as I finish them um, public, not even on Goodreads, not even with star ratings, uh, until uh, the quarterfinals of the booktube prize judging um, has wrapped up. But, so two of the books I'm going to be reading I don't have copies of uh, here. I'm still waiting for them on interlibrary loan. One of those is uh, Transcription by Kate Atkinson, uh, and the other one is called Freshwater, I think. And I think it's on the long list right now for the Orange Prize, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I, I don't remember the name of the writer of that one. But the other books that I'm going to be reading for my BookTube Prize judging are uh, Fire Sermon by Jamie Quattro, uh, which I got for Christmas uh, from my parents, if memory serves. I'm going to be reading uh, An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Um, the Oprah's Book Club sticker um, makes me a tiny bit nervous, but I've heard good things about this book, uh, including from the girl who was working the um, circulation desk uh, at the library that I checked this out from. 
And I'm going to be reading uh, Warlight by Michael Ondaatje. Uh, I bought this uh, when I was in England last summer for the um, Golden Booker uh, celebration, that glorious weekend that I spent uh, over there with friends and booktubers and uh, booktubers who became dear friends. And um, yeah, and I'm really uh, looking forward to this. I'm a huge uh, Michael Ondaatje fan. I've read and loved uh, The English Patient, um, Anil's Ghost, Davisa Darrow. I don't really like his poetry, um, but I may have to give that another shot at some point soon. And then uh, I'm also going to be reading uh, Washington Black by, uh, get my little paper out of there, uh, by, uh, was it Essie Adugian, uh, Esai Adugian? Um, and this was a finalist for the Booker Prize, and I think it won the Giller Prize um, this, this last year in Canada. And then the last book I wanted to share with you guys uh, is a book that I'm going to be doing as a buddy read uh, with Caleb, dear Caleb, in early to mid-June, and that is uh, Cloud Splitter by Russell Banks. And, uh, and this one um, I've been wanting to read for a very long time. Uh, it is narrated by Owen Brown, who was the last surviving son of John Brown. And John Brown is one of the historical figures that I have been most kind of obsessed with, I suppose, for a very long time now. Um, there was a wonderful novel about John Brown called Raising Holy Hell by Bruce Olds, uh, which I just love. Um, it's like Cormac McCarthy on steroids. So Steve, uh, Adrian Dalton, you guys probably wouldn't like Raising Holy Hell, but... Um, but I've been uh, curious to read Cloud Splitter for a very, very long time. This was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize when it was published. And uh, it's a big, chunky book. Um, the only other Russell Banks that I've read is The Sweet Hereafter, which I'm a huge fan of. And um, so we'll see how this is. Um, but this will be a buddy read with Caleb. So that's it. That was my winter. That shall be my spring. And um, if any of you have read uh, any of these books, particularly the ones that I have coming up, um, yeah, let me know what you thought, uh, without revealing any spoilers, obviously. Um, I'm a big stickler about spoilers. I know some people aren't, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited and I'm super excited to be judging, um, one of the groups in the quarterfinals of the book two prize. It's been a dream of mine, um, uh, my whole adult life actually to be a judge on a literary prize and, um, being a slow reader and being somebody who's not famous, um, that was always kind of a pipe dream and now it's a reality. So, uh, thank you, Robert, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to make the most of it. I hope you guys had a good week. I hope you've got a lot of reading to look forward to this weekend. And, um, and I hope it's warmer where you are than it is where I am. Uh, we have a little sort of minor blizzard happening right now, but, uh, it should all be over by midnight tonight. I will see you guys again very, very soon. Adios.